have to get this message out. I'm having some difficulties, but what I wanted to say is oftentimes we have Goliaths in our lives. We have giants in our lives. We have circumstances in our lives that we do not believe can fall. We don't believe that the God that we serve is bigger than the giant that we see in front of us. So oftentimes what we are going through, what we are facing can present itself to be bigger than God. And it's so easy to be convinced of that because we can't see God, but our situation, it's real, it's physical. Sometimes it may cause affliction. Sometimes it may cause pain. Sometimes it may even cause suffering. And so it's easier to believe my situation over God. One of the things that I love about David's story and him actually defeating this giant was that David was not focused on the size of this giant. Most of us and most of the children of Israel in that time who was there at the battlefield, most of them was actually focused on the size of this giant. And the fact that he had a big talk game, Goliath was able to make the children of Israel forget the God that they serve, he was able to make them feel as though they had no power. But what the problem was, is they were focused on the physical. They were focused on his physical stature and the fact that he was big and the fact that he was, well, he presented himself to be strong. And Goliath was considered someone strong because he was known as a champion. And so... David hears this uncircumcised Philistine disrespecting the God that he served pretty much, just speaking blasphemy. And it bothered David because David was someone who was always led by the Spirit of God and he trusted in God. He already knew the God that he served. He already knew what God was about. And so, you know, there were different scenarios and different times where David had to fight smaller giants. You know, the word of God talks about how he saved his sheep from the mouth of the lion. And there was another time where there was a bear. And so he was already preparing to face an even, great, an even greater giant who most people would have not fought. And I do want to go there real quick. One of the things that that David made known is that God is the one fighting the battle. It's God that's fighting the battle. You know, we have giants right now that we're facing in our lives that are presenting themselves to be greater than God. They're trying to make themselves louder than God, just as Goliath was. He was able to cause a fear in the land to where nobody was willing to fight him. It doesn't matter what King Saul was laying on the table and what he was willing to offer. Nobody wanted to fight him, although they knew the God that they were serving. But in that moment, this big obstacle was presenting itself more realer than the God that they serve. And so 1 Samuel 17 verse 45, I'm going to start at then said David to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield. And so that lets us know that not only was David not focused on the size of Goliath, but he wasn't focused or moved by what Goliath had in his hand either. Like, wait a minute. Like, and you have to, you have to understand and get the picture in your mind that Goliath didn't have no, no little itty bitty sword. Goliath had a sword that was fit for him. He had a big weapon. He had a big spear. He had a big shield. You know what I'm saying? He was a big dude. If I'm not mistaken, he was about nine feet tall compared to this little boy. And so Goliath took this as a joke. Like y'all, y'all send me out a boy. <laughs> I asked for y'all to send me out a warrior, a man of war, and y'all send me out this little boy. And so David is saying, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. And so David wasn't out there on the battlefield in ignorance or foolishness or 
thinking that he was something that he was not. No, David already knew who he was. And he had confidence to know that I'm not fighting on my own. And I don't come out here in my own name. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. That's who I come and I represent him. I am an image of him. If you disrespect my God, then you disrespect me. And if you disrespect me, then you disrespect my God. And someone like you, someone that's talking has to be put to sleep, has to be put to silence. I got to shut you up. And so that's how David felt. He says, in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of armies of Israel, whom you have to foul. Like, no, you... You disrespected my God. First of all, you don't even know my God, but my God is really than you. And I'm not going to let you speak loosely. I'm not going to even give you the chance to continue coming another day, speaking how you want to speak, feeling how you want to feel, expressing yourself. Because by this time, Goliath had been coming out every day, every day challenging someone to fight him. And nobody would, although they're there and they're coming and they're showing up. And they hear Goliath speaking these things about their God. No one was bold enough. No one was willing to actually fight Goliath. But David, he says this in, in verse 46. This day will the Lord deliver you into my hands. Such confidence. And I will smite you and take your head from you. And I will give the carcass of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air. And to the wild beasts of the earth. That all the earth may know that the God, that there is a God in Israel. So <laughs> David was speaking with such boldness and such confidence. Like you can see for him to even say what he said, that this was, this was a young man with some serious boldness and some serious confidence. You can tell that there was no fear or you can tell that there was no doubt in David. I'm trying to think of the word that I want to use, but he was so sure. Like there wasn't no uncertainty. Thank you, Holy Ghost. There was not no uncertainty with David. He was so sure of his God. And, and this is why we have to trust the more in God, just like David, because the more I trust in God, the more I know God, the more that I know that the giants will fall. They will come down because giants do fall. And David understood that. He was not focused on the size of this individual. And neither was he focused on his own size because he was, he was only a youth. He was only a youth. And so he wanted it to be known that this day the Lord is going to deliver you into my hands so that the whole earth will know that there is a God in Israel and that he is alive and that he is stronger than the giant, that he is mighty and that he is the God of armies. It says, and all this assembly shall know that the Lord saved, not with sword and spear. No, I want it to be known that God doesn't do things the way you do it. No, he, he, he can save with sword and spear, but no, I want it to be known this day that the God I serve does not just save with sword and spear. But, or it says, for the battle is the Lord, the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. My God, that is powerful. He will give you into my hands. And so David was very much aware of the presence of God in his life. The more aware that we are of the presence of God in our lives, the greater we can attack the giants in our lives because they are going to rise up. And sometimes the giants and the Goliaths in our lives can be our own thoughts, our inner or our outer soul because your thoughts, our thoughts can become so loud that we cannot hear God and we cannot stand on his word because our mind is telling us that the situation that's presenting itself is greater than God, although we know that that's a lie. We know that that's a lie because we know that the God that we serve, he's greater, he's stronger, he's more mightier. He's the, he's the God of armies. No, this is what he does. He fights battles. Do you not know that? Jesus says that the kingdom of heaven suffers violence 
and the violent take it by force. God is fighting battles. Even right now at 1.45 in the morning, God is fighting battles and he, he's winning them. He's winning every battle. Do you believe that for your own life? Do you believe that God can and is winning your battles? Do you believe that the God that you serve is greater than the giant that's in front of you, the giant that you are facing right now in your life, the Goliath that you are facing right now in your life? Do you believe that the God of Israel, the God of heaven and earth, the maker of the universe, do you believe that he is greater and that he's stronger? If you say yes, then why are you troubled? Why are you worried? Why are you stressed? Why are you overwhelmed? Why are you backing out of the fight? Not everyone is willing to fight, but you better be the one willing to fight. You better be the David in your own life that says, oh, I know the God that I serve. And this day will he give me the power to overcome this circumstance. This day will he give me the strength to overcome this the Goliath in my life. No, I had to know and believe that my God is bigger and that my God is stronger. It's not enough for me to say I know the God of Israel, but when the giants and the Goliath want to present themselves, I have to act accordingly. No, David already knew. Look, I already know the God that I serve. And so he acted accordingly. There were people already there before David and they were there every day as Goliath was showing up and he was talking John and talking smack as we would call it David showed up like wait a minute is there not a cause that's what he told his brother his brother told him why are you here oh you you just want to you just want to get into some stuff you just want to start some trouble you you want to be nosy why are you here and David is like wait a minute does the army of Israel not know why they are here he says is there not a cause? Is there not a reason? Wait a minute. Do you not hear what I hear? I know we hear the same thing. Do you not know the God that you serve? And so our very own thoughts. This is why Paul says that we have to take every thought captive. We have to arrest our thoughts because our thoughts can become giants if we don't address them, if we don't attack them and assassinate them immediately then our thoughts can begin to rise above God that's why the scripture says in taking every thought captive every thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God why because our thoughts they can go places they can begin to rise above the God that we serve and we have to be so confident I cannot express that enough I have to be so confident in the God that I serve that I'm not moved that I'm not moved, that I'm not shaken, that I'm not uprooted from my foundation. No, I need to be stable. I need to be stable and I, and I need to be grounded. And I need to know that God is in control and that he's at work. I need to know. And so every thought is subject to the name of Jesus Christ. Every circumstance is subject to the name of Jesus Christ. Every giant, every Goliath is subject to the name of Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter what I'm going through. It doesn't matter how big I may think the situation is or the circumstance is. There's nothing too hard for God. Jesus says, with man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. There's nothing too small or too big, too great, too low for God. God can handle anything that comes his way. You just have to believe that for yourself. No, I have a giant of a God. I have a giant of a God and he's bigger than the one in front of me. Yeah, although this circumstance, it seems so big and so great that I'm overwhelmed that I am becoming discouraged, that I am starting to feel a little defeated. I have to know at the end of the day, I have to know that my God is greater and that my God is bigger and that my God is in control. It doesn't matter what happens. It doesn't matter what I'm going through and what I'm facing. I have to believe that the giant of a God I serve is bigger than the one that's presenting itself. It doesn't matter how loud the situations and the circumstance get because giants, they can get loud. Circumstances, they can begin to get loud and they can blur your vision and they can begin to clog your ears and they can make you feel like there's no hope they can make you feel like where is god that god is left no god is here this is what god does for a living he fights battles he's a warlord he's the god of armies he fights battles and he enjoys them this is why he is raising up sons 
This is why he is raising up daughters to go and fight on behalf of the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. Do you want to be a good soldier in the army of the Lord? Because he's raising them up. And that's what David was. And David is a representation of the true sons of God who we are not, we are not afraid to face the Goliaths in our lives because they do fall. They do fall. They will fall. They must fall because everything is subject to the name of Jesus Christ. He's in control. God is in control. I have to believe that. You have to believe that. You have to be fully convinced and fully persuaded. I can't convince you enough. You have to believe it for yourself. And so whatever you are going through, you have to you have to stand on the word of God. You have to stand on the word of God. The word of God is forever alive. It's active. The scripture says that it is sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the dividing of sunder. And so this is a weapon. This is a sword. This is a sword. David went with his weapon. You know, there was a point before he actually went on the battlefield to fight Goliath. There was a point where as he was in the presence of Saul, Saul encouraged David to take on his armor. Hey, put on my armor. At least you will be covered. But to David, that shield and that armor and that sword, that wasn't, that wasn't the covering that he was used to. He was used to the covering of the Lord. And so he rejected the physical armor. Most people would have felt like, oh, he's young and dumb. Because you know David was young. He's young and dumb. He's ignorant. He has no idea what he's getting himself into. But listen, when you serve the God of heaven, it doesn't matter what you face. It's not about can God do it. It's about do you believe that he can because he can. There's nothing too hard for God. That's not some cliche, but that's reality. There's nothing too hard for God. God already knows that there's nothing too hard for him. He, he already knows. Listen, God is the problem and the solution. I'm going to explain to you exactly what I mean. God creates problems and he solves them. He solves his problems. And a lot of times God likes to get us involved. God likes to test us and see whether or not we're going to depend on him see whether or not we really trust him see whether or not we really believe that he's god and that he is a god of armies yeah he's the lord of hosts and he allows us to go through circumstances circumstances to see are we going to let him fight our battles because the battle is already the lord's no god created this problem and God is going to solve the problem. He may get me involved to see what I am going to do. Am I going to call on his name or am I going to try and defend myself? David did not go out on the battlefield trying to defend himself. He let God be his defense. And in our lives, we have to let God defend us. It's easy to be impulsive. What I mean by that is it's easy for me to respond to my sinful first nature, which is fight or flight, which is to survive. You go into survival mode and so you automatically, by default, you do things to save yourself and you try to defend yourself and to shield yourself. And many times we find ourselves in a lot worse of a situation than the one that was already, than the one that was, that was already presented. So now we've made room for a bigger giant and a bigger Goliath because we thought that we could fight our own battles and the battle is the Lord's. Like, no, he's the God of hosts. He's the God of army. You know, he is a warlord. This is what he does. He fights battles and he wins them. He's the victor. He's the real champion. He's the real conqueror. He's already, Jesus has already overcome. And so he knows what this walk of life is. I'm like, no, I already know the Goliaths that you're going to face. I've tackled them. I've defeated them. I've overcome them. I've beat them. Let me beat them for you. Let me fight your battles. Let me win for you because I never lose. Do you know that God never loses? He's never lost a battle. Never will, never has. 
He will always be the victor. He will always be the champion. He will always be the one that stands in the end. He cannot be defeated. He cannot be overtaken. He cannot be overruled. You have to believe that. You have to believe in the God that you serve. And you know that you believe in the God that you serve when you are letting God fight your battles. You may say, what does that look like, Sister Liberty? What does that look like? Because that's easier said than done. That looks like learning to be still and knowing that he is God. That looks like not always having a quick response or a rebuttal, not complaining, not murmuring, but learning how to go to the word of God and speak that over your situation. You don't let the situation tell you who your God is, but you tell your situation who your God is and you begin to speak over your situation and you begin to command and declare and decree things over your situation and over your circumstance. That is evidence that you trust God. That is evidence that you believe God and that you believe that he is a shield about you. All of those that put their trust in the Lord, then he is a shield. His truth, that is a shield. Do you believe the truth of God? Do you believe the word of God? You know that you believe when you respond accordingly. You respond based on what his word says and not how you feel and what you see. The situation looks like this. And so you go out and you have all of these different plan B, C's, D's, all the way down to Z. Or you begin to respond in frustration or in fear. And one of the dangers about fear is when we are fearful and we feel like our lives are being threatened or possibly at stake, then we will potentially do anything, any and everything to save and maintain our lives, to sustain our lives. And Jesus says that all of those that try to save their lives, they will lose it in this life. Oh, you're a fearful person. And so you're going to do whatever it takes to survive. You're, you will take a life. You will take a life. You will lie. You will, you will lie. You will steal. You will manipulate. You will take from people. You know, you will do all kinds of things that you would have never knew you were capable of in order to survive and to save yourself because you are afraid. And so we cannot respond out of frustration. We cannot respond out of fear. We cannot respond out of pride. We cannot respond out of stubbornness and doubt and unbelief. We have to be the kind of people who know who we serve. And that's all across the board. Whatever the situation is, I'm telling you, we are in a season of revival where the Lord is bringing revival revival, and the principalities and the powers of the air, the 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 unclean spirits of the air they are aware to some degree of what's happening they are aware of the shifting that's happening and so guess what they are fighting a lot harder and so what that means for the sons of god for the believers for the christians the followers is we have to begin to get more aggressive i got to get more aggressive in my pursuit for the lord i have to get more aggressive in my zeal and my hunger for the Lord, I have to stay hungry. I have to stay awake. I have to stay woke as they would say. I have to stay sober in my mind because the enemy, my adversary, is roaring. He's going around as a lion seeking whom he may devour. He's looking for an open door. He's looking for you to be vulnerable and feel as though the situation is bigger than God. And so now you are open to fear. You are prone to pride and so he's going to come and he's looking for a way to come in he also wants to distract and we're in this season where i gotta be sober i have to be so vigilant i have to be so careful i have to stay up under the covering in the umbrella of god because outside of god's covering outside of god's protection there is danger there is danger and i will be defeated by the giant if i don't stay up under his covering I will be overcome. I will be taken out if I am not up under the protection of the Lord. I have to know that God is my covering. 
I have to know that God is the one that defends me and fights my battle. I don't have to defend myself because he's the one that defends me. He's the one that is able to keep me from falling and to present me faultless. I don't have to, you know, feel as though because I'm I because I feel threatened, I have to now defend myself. And now it's causing me to sin and to compromise. No, I already know the God that I serve. And he keeps those in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him and who trusts us in him. Oh no, I'm going to have peace in the midst. David had peace. You didn't see David losing his mind and, you know, dropping his, his slingshot and his stone that he had and running away. No, he had so much peace that he was able to speak directly to this giant and let him know exactly what was going to happen this day. And so we have to be at such a peace within our minds that we can speak to our situation and we can tell our situation what it's going to be. We can speak to the the thoughts and we can speak to the thoughts that tries to rise up and we can let them know that they are subject to the name of Jesus. We can speak when our soul tries to rise up and try to and tries to convince us otherwise we can speak to our soul and we can put this flesh upon the subjection. And so my encouragement is that you no longer fight your battles, but that you start right now allowing the Lord to fight for you. I, I'm telling you, he's never lost a battle. And so you don't have to be afraid and, and doubt on whether or not God is going to win this thing. Listen, he's never lost. He's never lost. And if you are on the winning side, you will never lose either. And so may the Spirit of God give you ears to hear in Jesus' name.